Hello everybody and welcome back to our part two of our Re Beatles review on Past Masters. This is the review for Past Masters Volume 2. If you want to check out part one, just go back one more video and it'll be right there. Um, so the same rules apply to this video as with all of them. We take our scores and we rank them out of five. And then at the end we tally up our scores and give a total score for the whole album. So we'll start off with the first song on Volume 2. It is the song Day Tripper. This is a double A side single that was released. And this is the first song. Uh, it's got a very catchy riff. One, it's very popular, you know, that opening riff that comes in on, on Day Tripper and goes throughout the song. Um, I'm not usually a, a fan of loud tambourine and things like that on songs, but um, for, for me on this, this song, it works pretty good with it. Uh, it's just a really fun song to play along or sing along with and stuff like that when you're driving down the road. Um, I give this one a four out of five. Yeah, definitely that <laughs> iconic intro line that I think probably everybody knows on this song. Um, I really like the harmonies on this song again. Um, it's got a driving bass line that just makes the song fun and easy to listen to. I gave it a four out of five. Okay. And then the next song on the single was the song We, we Can Work It Out. Um, one thing that's a really nice addition I found I find on this song is the the harmonium that John plays on here. The I guess it's kind of an organ type song or type instrument. Um, it's it's a really cool feature on here. And then also in the kind of some of the middle parts, it switches from four four to three four time, which is kind of unique. It's not something you normally hear in songs like this. Um, one other thing that's kind of interesting is it kind of shows uh, John and Paul's writing together, uh, their kind of opposition, you know, Paul's being very optimistic, you know, like, we can work it out, we can work it out, but then John comes in with his, his lyrics of, you know, life's very short, it's, <laughs> we got no time for all this stuff, so they're kind of opposing, kind of like the song on uh, Sergeant Pepper getting better, you know, Paul's saying, oh, it's getting better, and Paul's, and John's like, well, it can't get much worse, <laughs> so there's just some of that back and forth that they're very good at writing together like that. Anyway, um, I really enjoyed this song. I gave it a, a 5 out of 5. Yeah, I like the, the vocals and the harmonies specifically on this song and the changing in rhythm, which they do tend to do a lot in their songs, but um, not all of them either, but it always adds an interest to the song and it shows just their skill that they have. Uh, I gave it a 4 out of 5. Okay. Um, one other thing I should mention about this Volume 2 of Past Masters, this is probably one of my favorite compilations of the Beatles. I listen to this CD back here all the time growing or when I, since I first got it. Um, you're going to see a lot of high scores for me on this on this album, so be prepared for that. Uh, the next single we have here, the A side, is Paperback Writer. And I've always loved this this song. It's got that nice heavy bass. I can tell in these later, later period that Paul's really getting into the more melodic bass lines and the bass is kind of being pushed out front more. Um, one thing that's also interesting is the, the background vocals when they're seeing the Frere Jaca in the background. It's kind of unique, uh, not something you'd expect to use for background vocals on any kind of song. Um, one thing I do want to mention is, while this is a really good song, I do like the mono version better just for the fact that when they're seeing the paperback writer line, there's kind of some phasing or something going on with their vocals, kind of a more psychedelic feel to it in the mono version where you don't get on the stereo. But other than that, it's got a really cool distorted guitar sound on it too. It's a little bit heavier than a lot of their other songs have been previous to this. And I gave it a 5 out of 5. Yeah, I really like the canon start with the different vocals and that happens throughout the song as well. So it just it's an added interest level to it. Um, and yeah, I noticed the bass line standing out a lot and just having a lot more movement in it, which just makes it fun. And the background vocals just add that. Um, another level of interest to the song. I gave it a 5 out of 5. Okay. And on the flip side we have the song Rain and I believe this is the first time that we've hear, we hear recorded uh, backwards vocals on a song. Towards the end you know the, the, the words are played in reverse which is kind of uh, gives you more of a psychedelic feel I guess is how you describe it. Um, there's that really, really good drumming by Ringo, and I believe Ringo himself has said that this is his favorite mm. drumming in, in the Beatles that he's ever done. 
Uh, so it's really nice to hear that. And again, there's just the really cool bass grooves that Paul puts in there. Uh, the To me, the bass almost seems more melodic than the, the guitars are. So you got that going for it. And it's just a really cool song. And I gave it a five out of five. Yeah, I noticed the bass and the drums definitely stood out the most in the song um, as just kind of being the most interesting part, I guess. The background vocals at the end with the, um, the backwards, I guess, is what it is. Um, it just has that rain sounding effect, I guess, to me. Knowing that the song is titled Rain probably helps that too. Um, but I guess I gave it a three out of five. Okay. Uh, the next single, we start with the A side of Lady Madonna. Um, this I've always loved this song. It's got that really cool like Fats Domino style piano playing in it, which I really love. Um, and then there's also Paul's, I believe, and more than likely it's Paul playing the bass um, that complements the the piano as well. It's this really cool bass line on there I love. Um, I'm also a fan of the saxophone parts on this. Um, anytime they use saxophone, that seems to be really cool. Like in Savoy Truffle on the White Album. Uh, the saxophone part on that is probably one of my favorite parts of that song, but um, I just really, really enjoy this song. It's uh, five out of five for me. Yeah, I like the piano and yeah, using the saxophone and just other instruments in the song just makes it interesting and kind of stand out from all of their other songs as well. The see how they run line is my favorite in mm. the song. I don't know, the vocals and the harmony. Um, there's a lot going on in the song too, which just makes it interesting. Not that it's too busy or anything, it's just that there's always something to listen to and catch your ear. Um, I gave it a 5 out of 5. Okay. And then the B side, we have a George Harrison song. This is The Inner Light. Um, I think during the Beatles' career together, George recorded three songs that had, kind of had the Indian influence. And this is the third of those three. And uh, I, I like this one better than when, Within You Without You from the Sgt. Pepper album. Um, I didn't really have a whole lot to say. <laughs> I'm not usually a huge fan of Indian music, but you know, during, through the Beatles stuff, they, they do a really good job at, of making that type of music. Um, this is not one that I'd skip or anything, but I don't normally just put it on just to put it on. But um, I gave it a four out of a five. Yeah, I mean, it's very obvious, you know, it's just that different sound with the, with the sitar and then I heard more flute and things like that in it as well. It almost seemed like there was more instrumental going on than singing in the song. Um, not my favorite style, just in general. Um, it's a, I gave it a 3 out of 5. Okay. Then our next single, probably one of their biggest hits for a single, is Hey Jude on the A side. Um, this song, you know, it starts off nice and soft and slow a little bit, and then just as it progresses, it just builds and builds and gets to be a, a bigger, bigger production, you know, until they get into the na na na's part of everybody in the crowd following along. And I know as Paul has played this live all the time, he never, he never <laughs> doesn't play this song. It seems like, and it's just, it's a good crowd song, you know, get everybody in the whole stadium singing the na na na's part um, it just works really good for that kind of stuff it goes on a little bit long I think it's a little over seven minutes long but it's still it's it's a really good song I gave it a five out of five yeah again obviously I think for anybody who doesn't know the Beatles knows the song um, I really enjoy the piano start to the song and then I like the drum kind of fill or whatever when the drums are introduced in this song and then everything yeah, just keeps building. The harmonies are another thing that really stand out on this song to me. Um, you know, I understand the na-na-na's with like a concert and I've been to Paul's concerts where he does the song and it is fun. For me, listening like at home or on the album just it gets too long. Like you just kind of, let's be done with this song, I guess. But it's still a really good song, so I gave it a five out of five. Okay. And then on the flip side, we have the song Revolution. Now this is the, obviously the single version. The original album version is a little bit slower than this. It's got, uh, yeah, let's see here. The, yeah, this single version uh, to me is better than the white album version. It's got a little bit heavier distortion on the guitars, which is really cool. Uh, it's a little bit more rock and up, upbeat. And, you know, it's one of their only, if it's not the only, it's one of very few political, you know, political type songs that they actually uh, recorded in their career together. It's just a really fun rockin' song. Uh, I give it a five out of five. 
Yeah, the opening guitar is one of my favorites on this song. Um, it's kind of, it's that heavier rock song, but it's like there's a distorted speaker sound, almost like it, the volume is turned up too loud so the speakers aren't playing well, but it works in the song too. There's a really cool piano interlude. Um, again, I don't know if it is a very long song, but to me it just kind of got a little bit long and repetitive at the end. It's not that long. It, and, and I'm <laughs> sure it's not, but it, that's just a thought I had, I guess, when I was listening to it, but I gave it a five out of five. Okay. Uh, then we have Get Back. This is the single version. Um, I really love the driving beat on this song. It's just a really forward-moving song. And with these next few songs, or a couple songs on, on this album, um, Billy Preston, he adds his organ to this. It's a really good addition. I love his good uh, organ playing. He does a really good job on here, and it adds a lot. And I like between, it's pretty much every verse, there's a little bit of a, a solo, like a guitar solo or organ solo something. And just the amount of those different little solos here and there makes it, makes it really cool. Um, one thing I like about this single version as opposed to the album version is that it goes on a little bit longer. It's not a whole lot longer, but you know, when, uh, when the album version finishes, I wait for Ringo to play that drum fill and then to keep playing, but it, it just ends there. So it's kind of a little bit disappointing. So it's nice to listen to the, the single version when you can. Um, it's just really good song. I give it a five out of five. Yeah, I like the driving opening um, drum and bass of this song. Um, it's got kind of, the interlude kind of changes to a different sound, just something different to listen to. It seems like there's a lot of different styles that happen in this song as well. Um, to me, it's just extra talking at the end. I guess I don't remember a whole lot else um, that the song goes on to, which I guess I could leave without. <laughs> um, but it's still a pretty good song. I gave it a four out of five. Okay. And then the B-side is John's song, Don't Let Me Down. Uh, this is a song that I really wish was on the Let It Be album. I just really love this song. Um, one thing that really stands out to me on this song is Paul's bass line. I just really love his flowing bass. You know, they go up and down the, the fretboard and stuff like that. Um, it's one of the highlights from the Rooftop concert that is in the, the Let It Be film as well. Um, it's just a great song and it's good to have Billy Preston playing again on the organ. It just adds a little something extra to it. Um, I gave this one a five out of five. Yeah, the bass line is definitely something that stood out for me as well. Very interesting and um, there's a lot of changing in rhythm throughout the song as well. It seems like a very soulful song to me um, and yeah, just a lot, of, a lot of stuff to listen to and go on. It's a pretty good song for me. I gave it a five out of five. Okay. And then the next single here we have the A side is the Ballad of John and Yoko. Um, one thing that's fun to think about on this song is that it's only Paul and John playing the entire song. You know, they they all they played all the instruments on the entire song, and it's nice at you know in this period of their career, everybody thinks of them being so, you know, they're breaking up and they're not nobody's getting along. But then John and Paul work together nicely on a song like this, and I'm I'm sure it was fun to do something like that. Um, and another thing that's kind of interesting, it's basically telling the story of John and Yoko getting together and getting married and stuff like that, how they had to go all over to get that get that done. It's just a fun story song as well. Um, I gave this one a five out of five too. Um, for this song, for me, it seemed like there was a lot of symbol that uh, kind of stood out in this song. There was like a weird <clears throat> stop in the middle where it just kind of stopped for like a second or something like that. Um, to me, it was a little bit of a boring song. I gave it a three out of five. Okay. The flip side of that is another George Harrison song. This is Old Brown Shoe. Um, thinking over George's career, I think this is probably one of my favorite George Harrison songs. I know you, there's something and Here Comes the Sun are very good too, but this is just a really, I don't know what it is about. I just really, really enjoy this song. Um, and the other thing I find interesting is that I've always loved the, the bass line in this song. And I found out later that it's actually George is playing the bass on this song. So he does a really good job at that. And that's a little something fun. And there's also some more of that kind of boogie-woogie piano type stuff going on in the, in the background there, which is really fun too. Um, I give this one a 5 out of 5. Yeah, the drums, I guess, in this song, it seemed like they just had a different rhythm that you don't hear very often in songs, something different. It almost seemed to overpower the vocals a little bit, or they just weren't as prominent as I would have expected. Um, 
a little boring to me. I gave it a three out of five. Beatles and boring doesn't seem to go in the same. <laughs> anyway, um, so the next song on the on the volume two here is "Across the Universe." Now this was included on the Let It Be album. It's just a slightly different version. Uh, this is a song that they uh, recorded for, I think it was the World Wildlife Federation or Foundation or something like that. Uh, just kind of raising awareness for wildlife, things like that. So at the beginning, there's you know some bird sound effects and things like that, which I suppose for the for the charity album it worked okay, but. If you're just listening to it on its own, it's kind of a little bit of annoying sound effects and things like that. And plus, this this version is sped up a little bit too, so it's kind of like higher pitched and a little bit too fast for this type of song. Um, so I didn't like that either. Uh, I do like the counterpart vocals on the choruses where they kind of um, complement each other there. This the different background vocals that I don't think those are included on the album version. So that's one thing I do like about it. But um, overall, not my favorite version of this song. I gave it a three out of five, actually. Yeah, I really like this song from, or the original version of this song, which makes this version almost worse, I guess. I kind of, when I like something, I like it, and I don't really want it to change. So um, I, the vocal part with it just had that weird sound, I guess, since it was sped up, which I didn't realize that's what it was. And I did not really like the background song, sound of it. Um, it just seemed, I don't know, just odd to me. I gave it a 2 out of 5. Okay. All right, then the last single here, we have the A-side, which is Let It Be, the title track from the, the album. Uh, I do like this album better than the, the album version. Uh, they're pretty much sim very similar. Um, but I do like George's guitar solo better on the album version. So, I mean, they're... They're very similar. It's it's almost like the the guitar solo is almost the the main difference in the song. But uh, either way, I gave it five out of five. I think that's what I gave it on my original review as well. Yeah, I mean, I really like the piano opening of this song, um, and I don't remember noticing it on the original album that we listened to, but it had just kind of an auditorium sounding to it, which just I don't know made it sound pretty cool. The interlude, yeah, the guitar solo is one of my favorite parts of the song. I gave it a 5 out of 5. Okay. Now the final song on the album, which is one I was curious to hear her <laughs> opinion on. Uh, this is the song, You Know My Name, Look Up the Number. Um, this is really, it's just a quirky song. Uh, I believe they worked on it for a little over two years. They kept They recorded some of it and they put it on the shelf and then they recorded some more and then uh, eventually in I think 69 it, it they ended up finishing it for the B side to this this uh, single I just think it's a fun <laughs> odd song uh, they kind of it's seems like two or three different sections you know they got like uh, kind of imitating lounge singers and stuff like that you know the, like the middle part you got kind of clinking and stuff it sounds like they're in a lot in a bar or something like that and they got the singer up on stage the guy introducing the act and stuff is just fun uh, it shows just a lot of different quirkiness, I guess. But I, I really enjoyed it. I gave it a 4 out of 5. I guess I'm maybe a little bit more of a purist when it comes to music, and I just want it to be straight singing and music. Um, you know, it had like a TV show talking kind of type things happening in there. Um, and basically the only lyrics are what's in the title, and yeah. that's it. <laughs> um, and then I don't know exactly at the end. It would just seem like it was just random sounds or grunting like not really even words at the end um not something i enjoy listening to so i gave it a one. A oh, one okay <laughs> it's probably the lowest so far of a song probably <laughs> okay so our total scores i added up everything on mine for volume two i gave this a 4.7 out of five and I gave mine a 3.8, which is the same as Volume 1, which I'm a little surprised because I thought I liked Volume 2 better than Volume 1, but okay. that last song maybe kind of was the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so originally this was released you know, on these CDs here, Volume 1 and Volume 2, so I kind of separated the scores that way, but then when the, the remasters came out, it was, they were both... Both included on the same, <laughs> the same album, so I don't know if you kind of consider that a double album that way. Um, so I kind of combined, you know, if we have volume one and volume two together, 
Uh, mine was a 4.6, you know, for the entire, the entire thing, it was a 4.6 out of 5. And I think yours was still a 3.8 out of 5, so not terrible. No. But it could be better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to thank everybody for sticking with us with these album reviews. It took a long time to get to this last one. But uh, I think we're planning on maybe doing, going into the solo years as well, kind of reviewing those albums too. So uh, stick around for that. We'll try and get them out a little sooner than another year from now. So <laughs> thanks everybody. Take care.